response. So today we're inside and we're about to go outside and we're gonna talk about something really important, which is a multi-ECU scan. Now having this uh, software is extremely important if you're an alpha owner, especially if you wanna do anything that has anything to do with do-it-yourself stuff, such as resetting maintenance lights, doing proxy alignments, which by the way is if your odometer is flashing, you need a proxy alignment. And if you have this program for 50 bucks, you can do it yourself. All you need is a Windows laptop and a EML 327 cable, which um, I always recommend the SX Links one. And I'll put all of this in the description so you don't have to worry about going through what, what you need. But I'm gonna to use today as a great example of what you can do with multi-scan. So, Let's go ahead and walk on out to the car. And we'll go ahead and get on in. Go find my laptop. Got it back here. Got my good old trusty cable. And we'll be doing some multi scan DC programming. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through some basic settings here. When I pull this up, and this is gonna be under devices, as you guys can see, there's nothing there. I'm using the OBD Link SX, which you can get on Amazon. What I'm gonna do now is simply plug this in. Okay. So once I have that plugged in, as you can see there, now it's reading that it is available in there. So that's how you know your cable is actually connected to your, with your computer. Now you're gonna go ahead and open Device Manager. So what I want you guys to look at here specifically is ports. Now it's gonna say serial number three com, and I want you guys to go to port settings, okay? So I see that three, eight, 400, that's important that the bits per second stay that. And then we're gonna go to advance. Okay, so once we're on advanced, and it'll tell you which COM it is, so COM number three, that's going to be important in the future. Latency timer, I guess I have mine set to 16, which is pretty low. Um, I believe 16 is good, so I'm going to hit OK. And that should take care of our device settings. And as you guys can see there, again, that's my settings. Alrighty, so now I have multi-ECU multi scan opened up and I'm going to go ahead and go under my settings and you want to go to interface. So you want to make sure that the COM3 is lined up because sometimes this will be a different number. You want to make sure it's COM3 if it's COM3 on your computer. So whatever COM it is on your computer, you want to make sure that it's the exact same COM in multi-scan. So also check your interface type. You want to set that to ELM327 if you're using the red cable. Um, also the serial port speed, I have mine set to this. You can change that, it just depends on what you want to do, but it should be fine if you keep it at that. The most important thing on this screen that I want you guys to notice is the high latency mode. That has to be checked if it's not check marked, it's not going to work. And you want to also check show available comps because that's very important. Now you can run a test to see if it's going to work or not. And it'll let you know right there once you run that test, this interface is compatible. It should properly connect with all Canvas modules. And again, that's this cable here. So once you run that test, you know you're good to go. You don't have to sit in your car and let the battery drain. Um, trying to run tests over and over and like you can do bench testing and that's basically what this is here when you run that test. And if it's good in here then that means when you connect to your car, ignition on, don't turn it on and then connect. And we'll go through that next in the next phase of this video. Okay so basically we're in the car and I guys want you to see I have the ignition on and I have my cable connected to the OBD2. Now we're going to come back to the computer, we're going to go under 2.0 and Canvas Proxy Alignment Procedure, we're going to go ahead and hit Connect. It 
shouldn't take too long to connect. And we'll hit yes because it is proc and then we'll go to adjustments. So here's where you can make all kinds of changes in here. Um, and you can see the list right here. So what we're going to do is go under comfort windows and I want to change that. So we're going to execute and we're going to hit enable and then we're going to hit OK. Confirm. Yes. Complete. Yes. And now from here we'll go ahead and do the actual proxy alignment. So now we're going to do the actual proxy alignment procedure. And we're going to hit yes, and it's going to start. Now keep in mind that while we're, while this is writing and connecting, you do need these cables here, the gray and the blue. It doesn't take too long to write everything. But be aware that you do need to do the switches um, in a relevantly quick time. So as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and just place my camera right here, turn up my screen. And pretty soon here it's going to ask me to switch over some things, so you'll see me swap one of these based on what it's asking. So it's asking for the blue. What I'm going to do now is pull that out. find where it connects to, and then connect it back. So now that we've got that reconnected, you can see it's now writing more data. And eventually it'll get to another point where we do the swap again. And as you can see, it's doing certain things, like resetting the radio. And that's totally normal, totally fine. But you have to do this procedure for basically, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn off the radio because I don't want any sound. So now it's asking me to do the gray adapter. Sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to. We're gonna hit yes. So now as you guys can see, it's gonna be doing a multitude of things here. Again, the proxy alignment's really important because whenever you add something to the vehicle, whether it be a new module or just changing out a part, you wanna let the car know that you're doing something to it. And this gets all the modules in line and up to date. So as you can see, it's going to continue to hit success, success, and that's exactly what you want to see. So we'll go ahead and let it keep riding. Again, you can use this for the maintenance light. You can use this to actually see all the parameters of your vehicle in live stream, um, including creating data graphs. Make sure you, and you'll be able to see like your boost pressure, your timing, your air fuel ratio, all of that. So once it's completed, it's completed. Turn key off. And that's exactly what I'll do. And we'll turn it back on now. And turn the wheel side to side. Because a lot of the times it requires that. I'm not sure if it's going to do it this time, but we'll see. Go ahead and turn down this AC because I don't want the sound. But as you guys can see, we'll turn it off there, turn it back on. There's going to be no flashing odometer, which means that we were successful with our proxy alignment. And that's how you do it. Okay, so here we are back in the car. And um, I was going to show you guys the <clears throat> auto unlock where the windows roll down when you hold the unlock button but turns out you have to change the country code and I didn't want to do all that so I, I was the whole point was just to show how multi-scan works and how the proxy alignment works 
but I also want to show different functions and this happens to be one of those scenarios where I was driving home and the start stop unavailable showed up on the dash it's not there anymore but I want to check where my battery's at just to you know make sure that everything's good so we're just gonna hit connect now that um, the cables reconnected and you can't do this with the car on that's fine um, if you're checking parameters so you're gonna go to parameters and then we will go to IBS battery charge and battery voltage so as you guys can see there we are good to go um, around 80% is totally fine you're not gonna have any weird uh, weird things happening at that point in time. It's not going to go into the mode where it shuts down the rear defrosters and things like that But it's important because you can rule out things like okay, my battery's fine and that's just one example And here's another great example of something that you can do. We're just going to go down to scan DCT and it's going to go ahead and check all the available modules and you can look for soft codes which are codes that don't show up as a check engine light but are on the vehicle so as you guys can see there it's showing zero percent but it's running doing its thing and this this is one of those things where like you're gonna find these codes happen and you'll be able to tell when it's something serious because you'll have an actual check engine light versus a soft code that just happens to pop up here that may pre-indicate something's happening in the future um, but not anything that's currently an issue just yet um, again soft codes are things that show up on here but won't actually show up um, on the jet on the dash as a check engine light and so this is just going to run through all the different errors and that way you can see exactly what's happening with the hardware or the yeah, the hardware, the modules um, in your car. I think it's pretty important if you're troubleshooting a little bit harder to find problem that doesn't show up with the check engine light. So that's just another function that you can do. And at the very end of it, you know, when you're done, you can clear it. All you have to do is hit clear. So the only thing that I'm finding in here, mine always tends to do the gearbox, gearbox, error found not too concerning to be honest um, and yeah that's that's about it there all right everybody so hopefully that helps you guys out look at multi-scan i really think it's super important for every alpha owner to have this software it's fifty dollars it's well worth what you're paying and what you're going to be getting out of it i mean you're able to do all sorts of things including the fuel inertia switch, which is like if the car, if you bought a car in auction and you need to reset that so you can get the fuel to go back into the car after the accident, it kind of cuts that off. So just everything in general from data to if you want to graph your data, if you want to see if you're losing boost anywhere, um, if you want to make changes or, you know, write the modules, you can do all of this with um, multi-scan ECU. So. I think that it's well worth it, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Alpha Mods out.